Dean Ratliff is our business development specialist who is, has been a tenant and a partner since I came to the incubator and she's taught us all very well and we are pleased that she is going to be talking to us again about her iPad creative workshop which I call her the guru of everything Apple and this is something that she does that she loves and you'll see during this class that uh, she's the best anywhere she that? is the best <laughs> ever. yes she is so without further ado say you out well, good afternoon. Are we going to have some fun today? Yes. As Kathy said, I'm Sandy Ratliff. Um, this title now will change uh, by on next Friday. I have resigned from the state and will be going to work for Virginia Community Capital. So this is my last on the official for the, the, the state, but now I'm staying on as a partner and we can continue this and even do more now that uh, I'm with Virginia Community Capital. So I'm excited. So that means when you fill out your, your form, be a little nicer, you know, even though a flaw. But uh, this is something that I've been using since, I guess, I got my first iPad when it was the iPad 1. Remember, it had no camera on it and had the big plug on the back. I have been going up using iPads um, ever since. Um, I serve 24 counties uh, working for the state, so I'm not in an office. And the iPad became the go-to device to allow me to have a mini office sitting in my lap at um, uh, a rest area that I needed to contact somebody that they said I need a copy of your presentation or a form or what have you. Um, I do all of my presentations, my uh, developing flyers, everything I do through my iPad. <laughs> and it has become one of the most efficient devices I've ever used. But before we get started, let's go around the room, introduce yourself, and tell me what you do with your iPad now. And it's okay if you say Angry Birds, that's old though, but uh, <laughs> any of those kind of things. So let's start over here. Okay, I'm Anita Manuel, and I um, do some EFT coaching and have a few piano students still as well. And so I have an office, and I've taken my iMac over to the office, so I use my iPad for everything I do at home. So, you know, it can be um, good getting on with the bank, it can be, you know, any kind of email. Um, I actually do Skype sessions with clients on it. Do you want to do this workshop? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no, no I think, you know, the mar this was about marketing and I'm a little bit weaker there, so I'm just learning how to do that. Yeah, but I'm glad. Uh, my mother, who will turn 86 in a uh, month and a half, she has two iPads and she's been using them for a number of years. and. Um, she reads her Bible, watches YouTube videos um, when she goes to bed. So uh, it's a we're an iPad family or a Mac family. Hello, Miss White. <clears throat> I'm Sylvia White, and uh, I use it to read uh, newspapers. I use it for cooking. I use it uh, for camera. Uh, I'm not as good with it as Jack is. Oh, don't give him the big head. <laughs> but I'm learning. Good. Good. And Apple keeps us all, because they always come up with updates with new features, so they always keep us learning new things. Jack, after you got your mouth full. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is my third iPad. This is a Pro. And I gave my hair to Sylvia when I got it, so that's first second one, I guess. She had my first time. Anyway, I do most of my reading on it. Periodicals, magazines, books. I, all my book reading is done on it. We just had a class at our church, and rather than the book being, everybody else had their books open, I had the book on the iPad. I, I buy most of them off of the Amazon, you know, or occasionally Apple <coughs> store. And, I do some correspond, you know, I, I'm sitting around and check my email and send email. You can do most anything with it. Good. The one thing that, I read a lot of the articles about things that they wish the iPad would have, and I don't see other people saying that. I think the files, they need a new way of handling files. You know, documents. Yeah. You create something. <laughs> and you don't want to necessarily keep it with the app. You want to be able to, you know, if it's for a project or a personal thing or whatever, 
and other something documents necessarily belong with the gospel of the app that creates them. They need, you need to be able to put them where you want them and get them together. They, you do that on the map. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I think when Apple decided to do their way, they wanted to do it up in the cloud so you have access to documents <coughs> wherever you're at. But we can put, can put it on the cloud. Way. Can you do that on the cloud? Yeah, you yeah, can you put can, it in the cloud. I have all my pages. Huh? You I can save stuff now. if you create it, and I'll show you. Then you can just save it up to your Dropbox or your Google Drive. Well, I have Dropbox. Okay, I'll show you when we okay, get into that. Okay, do that for a fee. <laughs> I know I pay them, but, but you know, I'm saying I'm I wish we jobs, so I you know, wish make ends meet. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't okay. Talk to you. My name is Harmony Edwards, and sadly, I only use mine for reading or a Kindle game. We're gonna change that. <laughs> Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Casey St. Louis. I'm an admin in all of our company. Are you with me? Good. They help you. So what do you do on your own? Oh, my yeah. God. What you guys tell me to do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no name called. Clearly, I know. <laughs> I'm Susan Arrington, and I don't really do a lot on it, but I did play a lot of Candy Crush. <laughs> 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 and check emails and so forth until I... I use a laptop more than I use the iPad. Until after today. Exactly. Okay, okay. I just don't know to use it. That's why I play the Okay. I'm Eva Bowling, and uh, I own the Venture Mendota, and we use it in our small business for so many things. It's my point of sale cash register. It's, uh, I use Canva, which you uh, told me about, to do um, some things for social media marketing. Um, we, I use it and the Animoto app to do some videos. Um, I use it for pictures that I upload to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So I can't imagine not having my iPad. That's the way I feel. If I don't have it, I feel like a part of my heart is missing. You lost Nita. Hello, I'm Nita Farmer, and I'm with the Washington County Chamber of Commerce. And my iPad is my everything. So I use it for a little bit of everything with work. I use it for meetings. On um, most stressful days, I even color with it. I don't have everything in my magazines. I need a packet, everybody. And I use for everything, same as my twin before. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're doing great at it. She's doing presentations and all kinds of stuff. So she's growing up on me. <laughs> hey, Pat. Pat Caleb's. I use it as a paperweight. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And uh, I'm here to learn. Okay. Uh, my name is Christina Duran, and I work for Southwest Virginia Community Health Systems. And we just recently bought a bunch of iPads for our different sites to do patient surveys on. And since we bought them, I figured, you know, why not use them for more than just patient surveys? <coughs> small businesses in town and um, I use my iPad on all of the jobs but I especially like that I have an invoicing app that I really like where I can keep track of my time when I'm working on for different people and then and send them an invoice because that's how I go. So and I which app do you use because I get asked that a lot. I, I've got Zoho invoice right here. It's the one that <coughs> for me it works the best. Okay? Then he'll have yelled at uh, yeah, I'm in college and I use it for work and play and play games and check email and create documents and stuff and everything. Oh. Charles Perry, uh, I don't own an iPad uh, or <laughs> Mac or you know, any Apple products. Yeah. I'm here to yeah. find out what I'm missing out on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've got a diverse group. Well, Jennifer, introduce yourself. I'm Jennifer Davidson. I work here at the Incubator and I don't have an iPad, I use <coughs> Vegas. But you got an iPhone. I have an iPhone. Some of this stuff yeah. you can do with your iPhone. And if you notice, I'm using Sandy, my iPhone. Yes. The last time I had two I, uh, Mac MacBook Pros. And the last one got tired. And I said, I never take it out anymore. It just sits on my desk hooked up to a big screen because I got this thing. So I bought a desktop computer. I don't even have own a book. Portable computer. <coughs> I mean, this is a portable computer. Yeah, it is. But not a, a laptop. A powerful one. Mm -hmm. 
Well, hopefully I can share with you some things that I do with my uh, iPad that give you some tips of how you can do more with this than just play games and so forth. I'm sorry, this, um, but what we're going to talk about is how do you use to develop um, products or uh, to use in your business some of the top apps, how you can develop marketing materials. I do all my brochures and so forth using the um, the iPad and Kathy and I even did a table tent this morning right before we came in here for our business challenge uh, awards that you can just do things that little finger makes everything happen um, on your iPad. Also how you develop presentations and I'm using my iPhone today uh, synced to my iPad so that I can move the slides over and I don't have to go over here to touch plus I can see where I'm at. Uh, we're going to learn how to develop some videos, some movies. I've done that a whole lot, like today, we could download today's um, uh, streaming that, that Jennifer's doing. We're streaming this live to our Facebook page uh, on the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator. We can download that from Facebook and edit it and then put it up on our YouTube channel. And there's apps that allow you to do that. And then I'll also show you some photo editing because a couple of you all said that you do this, use this for photos. Everybody get a copy of the presentation? Okay. Uh, some of the top apps, and I'm going to go through some of these that I use, and it's just for the sake of time, I'm going to just go through those as I, uh, we cover them, okay? You've got it in there. So let's start creating. How to develop a flyer. How are you doing it now? You just got your piece of cardboard and <laughs> markers and so forth? Well, you don't have to do that anymore. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's right. That's what I use, but I will show you some um, apps that you can use, but also how you can convert those, save those as PDFs, put them up on your cloud, um, and so forth. Pages is what I've been using. Uh, I used to, back in the day, I used to use Microsoft Publisher. No more after using Pages. It makes it so much easier that you can convert. You can do some really creative, uh, professional-looking flyers. You can even save those in high resolution, so if you want to send it to your printer and have those professionally printed, you can. <laughs> um, you can also convert those to, once you've created those, convert those automatically to a PDF, or if it's someone that wants to help you in editing and they don't have a, uh, an iPad and use pages, you can convert that to a Word document and they, they, can, they can have access to it. The other thing that I really love is have you ever through the years been working on a document and something happens and you haven't hit save and you lost those hours of working on that? Well, at least with the iPad and working with pages, I can have that synced to my iCloud account. So as I'm working on that, it's automatically being synced up in the cloud. So if I want to access it from uh, my iCloud.com uh, and, and get it on my computer, I can or I can access it on my phone or any other device. You have that, you don't have to worry about it. Being, um, being take, losing it. So let's give it a try. I'll show you how I use it. How many of y'all have Keynote or uh, uh, Pages on your device? I think with newer devices, Pages is free. It's part of the iWorks uh, package with Apple. Um, if not, I think it. If for older devices, I believe the last time I checked, it was $9.99. But if you do a lot of developing, to me, it's worth it. Um, just because it's so much easier and simpler to, to do. Um, but anybody use pages besides Jack? I do all Good. You hear you do this presentation. You can buy templates for for the uh, for the pages. There's a couple of programs called templates for pages where you can actually get a bunch of kinds of templates from business cards to uh, menus to uh, flyers, you name it, you can get it on there. Well, they give you a bunch of them with it, probably. You, you do, but, but they, these even have it kicked up a lot more. Yeah, you have a lot more options on yeah. it. Keep losing the uh, When you, for example, this is template for um, apps, for pages. You can actually, when you find something that you want, you just click on it and tell it to copy it to pages and then that will automatically bring that up. Does that help? Can you see better? Yeah. Uh, template for pages is $2.99. And again, if you're going to be doing a lot of creating uh, uh, flyers, especially if you're going to be doing like 
uh, if you're a restaurant and have doing menus or that type of thing, I think it's well worth. And they update those periodically and bring some refresh uh, up the, the content of it. And again, they have all kinds of stuff from flyers to invitations, you name it. Once you find something, you just click on it and tell it to copy it to pages. And there's another one called Templates for Pages, and it's 99 cents. You get about 250 different kinds of templates on it. But when you want to create a document and you're in uh, Pages, when you open it up, where it says Create, there's a plus symbol there. And then it will even give you, when you hit that, it will give you different templates that you can use. Well, let's go to it. See, these are the, 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 the types that Jack said they already give you some templates from envelopes to letterheads to business cards, resumes, resumes, flyers and posters, cards. Are these the ones that come with it? Yes. Okay. And you just pick the one you want, open it up, and now you can start creating. You can even add your logo if you want. Also come up here and give it a name. And now you've created a document. You can add all the content you want on it. And Jack, you remember I said now that you created, you have various ways that you can save that. You see where the double, the, the triple dots are right there? If you click that. Now we have a couple ways we can we can share this document. When you hit send document, I can go ahead and convert that um, to PDF or to Word or ePublish or save it as pages. But just for the heck of it, I'm gonna go ahead and convert it to PDF because I want to show you now how you can just move that up to your cloud account. Can you see that where it says how to send? I'm going to go to, you see I have a lot of apps, where it says import to uh, Dropbox here. <coughs> That's how you do it, Jack. Then you just well, tell I know it. that, but if I have 20 head folders and each one of them has 10 subfolders in them in Dropbox, you can't put them in a particular folder. Yeah, you can. How, how do you do that? I thought they had dropped into Dropbox and you had to go back later and no. put it where you wanted it. You see where it says here, choose a different folder? Oh, okay. You click that. And then you go to... Uh, okay, I mean, it's whatever you got on there, right? Yeah, and then if you even have subfolders in that, you can take yeah. it directly to it. And it'll do the same. And that's, that's how you can save Does it. Does it always come back to the same one, so you, if you want to save, save it and then uh, put another one in that same one, does it remember that last time you were in the New and Lunch Series folder? Yeah, he'll go back to the one that you just finished okay. with, but <coughs> if you've gone and done others. You don't have to go through that lot, but once, the whole picking. But that's if you're still in the same, if you've not to take it to another folder. Oh, I understand, yeah. Eva, do you use pages? No, I'm not on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else use pages? How do you all, do you all create, create your own flyers and stuff? Or what are you using at the Olive Oil Company? It's usually Word, Photoshop, things like that. 
this would be so much easier for you. I'm thinking it could really enhance it and you can add your photos to it, your logos. Just move it around with your fingers instead of that mouse. This looks a lot easier than Canva, actually. Is it? I think so. Yeah, I do too. Just from watching what you were doing and I was messing around with mine. Mm -hmm. Canva, you're limited when you're ready to download it. You can either, there are only two ways you can save it, is a PDF or a JPEG, which we're going to talk about Canva in a minute. With this, I have other options. I can save it in pages. Well, saving it to a Word file is kind of nice. Yeah. For editing purposes. Especially if you're sharing it with someone else that's, that's not an iPad uh, user. Like One thing Charlie, that pages Charles has, you can make it into a word processing document like Word. Mm -hmm. You know, where you type and it creates lines and all like that. Or you can make it into a page layout, you right. know, where you got images and you move it around. Right. I'm, so, down, I'm downloading it right now. Yeah, okay. I'll use it. I mean, it's a, uh, and that choice is made for each new document you create. And the good thing, too, you'll have it if you have the same Apple account on other mm -hmm. devices. You see, you've already, you can have it on those others, too. Oh. And yeah. then you're, you can sync them. So when you're working on one, if, if Mike has an iPad and you all are in the yeah. same Apple account, you can share it. And we are. Because I do that all the time between. All your devices, because we've got a lot of Apple products there. Yeah. <coughs> but again, you pick the document, and when you pick, pick it, then Here's now you one, can start one question, Sandy. You no, had, that's it. When you uh, <laughs> pick that lunch bag, you know, it, was that in the photos? Or, yes, it was under okay. photos. Is there any place else besides photos that you can get images to put in there? They don't have like clip art or anything like no, that. No, if you have uh, a bunch of folders in Dropbox or any of the other things, could you go in there and click something and make it? I can't. I can't go directly and get it from Dropbox. What I would have to do, if it's something that I have in Dropbox, I have to open up Dropbox and then save that into my camera roll. But I mean, it has to be in the yes. pages. That's a limitation. Go ahead. Yeah. And then what I do is I've made albums, photo albums. So like logos, I can go to them real quickly. Mm -hmm. Bypass all that. Again, if there's a picture that you don't like, you can replace it, and what that does, that goes into your your photos or your camera roll, and then you can act, you can get that that um, that photo and just plop it right in there. You can also kind of like how you did with Publisher, if you're doing a, a document and you want to have uh, that that logo be in the background instead of being the foreground where you can write over it. You can also change that where you can arrange it. You can even make it the style of it. You can have shadows on that, that logo and, and all kinds of stuff. <coughs> but you do that here. <coughs> and again, you can find it from your camera roll. And I'm a firm believer, if you've got like me, probably 4,000 photos on my iPad, having um, folders within photo albums set up is a lifesaver. So what you could have is photos of products. You could have photos of your logos or different variations of it and have various albums so you can go right to it so you're going to take you hours to go find it. It's sort of how what you all might do uh, with what you're doing in the, what was it again? Uh, it's, yeah, like we're doing patient surveys. So. You can do it there. Um, and again, I showed you already how to, to save it. You can send a copy or open it up in another app. Now, I mentioned that too because I could take that that photo <coughs> or this document, and then there's going to be times where um, you're going to want it in a JPEG, a graphic file, so that you can put it up on your, you know, your Facebook page or your um, uh, Instagram or what have you. When you're doing that, you go back up to the the triple dots and I want to send a copy I want to do it for example on PDF and back in opening that early on I in, uh, invested in the greatest app and that is PDF to JPEG mm -hmm. I don't know if it's 99 cents or $1.99 but that was the best investment because what that allowed me to do is now take that that document, and even if it's a multiple page document, 
I can now I can now convert that into a uh, into a JPEG. Just help to convert it. And see it gives it that for all of those pages so they're individual pictures now. And you can go in there and if you need to edit one of those, you can edit that image if you need to crop it. If you need to rotate it, you can do that and then save it and then tell it to save it in your photo album and you've got it now. So I could pull your new knowledge lunch series and put it, download it into mine and be able to mess with it if mm -hmm. I wanted. Yeah, you should could. She doesn't get you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's promoting new knowledge. I'll allow her to do it. I can send it to her to do it. But as I say, when you do that, when you open it up in another app, you have various options where you can send it up to Dropbox. If you have a Wi-Fi printer, you can go ahead and schedule it to print from there. If it's not an air print, some some you know some people have the older uh, printer. So you can open it up into all kinds of different documents, and it would look the same if you're converting it to Word too. It would you'll see if you have Word on your iPad, then it will allow you to open it up in Word too, and you can continue working. It working on it in your work app. And here's, it's $4.99, I'm sorry, the last time I checked. But it's well worth it to me for what I need to use it for. Now Eva mentioned Canva. Is anybody besides Eva and I heard of Canva? Heard of it but not used it. Canva is, um, allows you to not only have the app, but you can sync it into, it's kind of like a cloud-based graphics design, what you say? Mm -hmm. I like it, I think I'm going to like make it better. <coughs> That's what you and said. by the way, the cost is very affordable, it's free. Yeah. You can get professional, I think, for $5. For not professionals. Yeah. <laughs> but you can create all kinds of different types of documents, posters, um, if it's time for you to refresh your Facebook uh, page, um, you know, the background and so forth, you can even create it there. Um, you can even do Instagram posts, um, all kinds of stuff, even your social media posts. Like if you want to redo your Twitter background, you can do it on here as well. Hi, our county supervisor, we had a, we had a fundraiser, and so I did that for myself, and he was like, <laughs> It is. It's, it's, it's really easy. Plus, you can access it. All you have to do is create an account and go to www.canva.com, log into your account, and everything you've done on your iPad is going to show on there, and you can continue working on it on your, on your computer. And then when you come to put it back up on your iPad, everything's going to be up to date because it's all synced together. Now, when you are working on it on your iPad, you need to have Wi-Fi to be able to keep it syncing. So even if you've done it in pages, it will... This is a different one now. We finished with pages. This is another option for you. If, so if pages is not for you, okay. then Canva is another option. And it might be, depends on your situation. Some people would like that better if they're not, you know, not comfortable on their iPad yet. Good. <coughs> you can create uh, really, really nice and professional uh, flyers, all kinds of stuff. And what it is is they give you all kinds of different templates that you can choose from with great backgrounds and so forth. And then when you select the one that you want, then you just start dropping in your own photos because it'll go, you can go into your photos on your iPad and, and grab them and put them into your, into your uh, document. Now I will say, doing it on the iPad, from my experience, if I was to drag a picture over and put it in here, sometimes if I want to put a picture beside each other or in the same block, it will automatically put that picture when I drag it over and take up the entire block. And I have found that I have to go on the, the computer and actually do it there for whatever reason. Do you, yeah. Have you ever had that happen? I do. And what I do with mine is I try to look at the picture that they use in their template and see the size of it. And then I go back and I try to make mine that size and it works better because you're right. Sometimes what I think is going to be a picture of a person doing this, it's just a no, yes. really. You yeah. have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Do you, you use it too, mm -hmm. Phil? Yeah, I would say problem. And I, I just go to the computer, yeah. log into it, and I can make those changes. 
it's still a great app. I, you can't beat the price of it. Um, and then when you're finished, you have two options of downloading it, either as a PDF or JPEG. And then you can just save it. When you do it on your iPad, it will save the, the JPEG right into your camera roll. For the PDF, you can either go ahead and have it printed using the PDF version or put it right up onto your Dropbox, wherever you want to save it, or your Google Drive, or wherever you want to save it at. Or you can also email it or text it out. All right here. Anybody ever use Google Docs? It's free, number one. Um, and Google Docs works with all your other Google products and they sync together. That's one of the things I love too. And as you're working on it, it's again, it's syncing it and it's saving it up onto whichever Google account you're logged into. And you can create brochures, flyers, you can even do pre presentations on Google Docs. I personally haven't done a whole lot of creating on it because I have these others, but I know some people that do that. But that gives you a couple options. You can also import your pictures and post them right into your, your document. You can share it, send it as an email. You can also convert that document into a Word uh, format if you want to share it with someone else. You're welcome to. It's pretty easy. Any questions on developing flyers? Since we only have um, a, an hour and a half for this session, I can't go into detail, but at least you're getting you're learning about some new apps and ways that you can use this. Any questions before we move on? There will be an essay test afterwards. <laughs> so I suggest you pay attention. Okay, developing presentations. How many of you all have to do presentations as part of your job? Sometimes that can be very challenging, especially if it's on something that you're not 100% sure of and you've got that blank document or page and you're trying to figure out those creative juices are just not coming you just haven't had enough chocolate for that day uh, there are some really cool apps that will help you in that development stage and, and keep them up a few notches so we're going to talk about some apps and sharing options going forward keynote keynote is what i'm using today and i have keynote on my phone which is allowing me to sync and to control the, today's presentation it's about, uh, it's about Apple's PowerPoint. It? Yes, it's, it's, it's part of the iWorks, just like Pages is. I know, I have it. Um, but it's, you can create <coughs> presentations. I love the animation that you can do in uh, Keynote. You can also embed uh, videos right into it so that when you're doing a presentation and you've got a video maybe that you've downloaded from YouTube, you have it saved, all you have to do with the click, then it'll automatically play that video for you. And after you're finished, you just continue on. So it, instead of having that stale, you know, presentation, now you can kick it up a whole lot. For example, if you're doing one on your um, uh, piano lessons, you could actually have some pictures and have some videos and have those all going into a presentation, even down to having a self-playing presentation. If you're at a, at a, a trade show or an event, then you could have your iPad sitting there, locked down, of course, and have that running and your music, your videos will automatically start and play, have that going. That could be great too if you do any shows and stuff like that. Um, also when you're doing, using Keynote, you can also convert those presentations to PowerPoint format, back to, you know, Apple's still friendly with, with Microsoft, or you can convert it to a PDF, which sometimes if I'm sharing the presentation, I convert it to PDF simply just because it doesn't take so much memory um, and bandwidth to have to, to send it to somebody. The other part I love is as I'm working on it, it's automatically saving it to my iCloud account. And again, if I want to continue working on it on my computer, I can all I have to do is go to iCloud.com, <coughs> log into my credentials, hit keynote, and there's my presentation. And for those of you that do not have a um, a printer at home that has Wi-Fi or AirPrint and you need to print it and you've got it on your computer, that's the way to get around it is open it up in iCloud, get your presentation and tell it to download it into PowerPoint and then print it. That's the way I've done it before. 
Just like Pages, uh, Keynote has templates that you can purchase. Uh, an app called Templates for, for Keynote for 99 cents, and it's got a variety, again, if you're stuck with that blank sheet of paper and you can't figure out how, where I want to go with this presentation, at least it's giving you some templates that you can go through, some, some already set up color schemes and so forth that you can use. But you can always go, like this background, you can actually change that to your own background or something that's close to home. That too, if you're doing something on some property or development, Pat, you can you can have have those pictures custom to that that uh, property that you're you're showcasing. Another one is templates for Keynote um, Pro. That's four ninety nine, and it's another example of a uh, template package you can buy. To create a presentation, you just open up Keynote. How many's got Keynote? Okay. If you haven't, you ought to uh, consider, especially if you do a lot of presentations and you have other Apple devices, trust me, you'll thank me afterwards. But if you're going to create a presentation, you just go up here and hit the plus symbol. Uh, and it'll ask, you know, you can use some existing templates that they have um, provided to you. Or you can import one of those from those other packages that we just showed that you could add. Here's some examples of what comes with it. And again, you can change these pictures the way you want it. But it comes with basic color schemes and so forth and the fonts. So why spend hours and hours? Use it. Just replace the names and, and pictures and there you've got you a nice looking presentation customize it. When you're creating one you can add a slide but if I'm doing that in here so if I'm working on this and I want to add a slide you see this plus symbol here and now I can tell it what kind of, of slide that I want to include in there. Then I can just start changing the text. And there's the, there it is. And I can add other, I can add, uh, if I want to add a picture to it, go to the plus symbol up there. Go to my logos, whoops. I can add all kinds of pictures to it if I want. Then I can change those however, however I want. But if you don't want it any longer, you click on it here. It says we're delete or skip that slide like you're doing a getting one of self cleaning a presentation and you want to skip a slide, maybe something's changed and you don't have the time to update it, you can also tell it to skip a slide. Look at there, there's my veil light. I didn't realize I could do that. And it is nice when you're doing shows and so forth to have those self clean um, presentations if you've already invested the time and created the presentation. Why not use it? Take that opportunity to really sell yourself. If somebody's standing there talking to you at your booth, they can also see some examples as you're talking. And you can you can just follow along. Here's an example of this package that we did, etc. There's some examples of those uh, nice um, graphics. And as I said, you can also make sure my have my sound off I do. So you can just add, just drop a video right into it. And you can tell it if you want to make it a looping presentation or what have you. Any questions on, on Keynote? It's great not tried it, I highly recommend you won't want to use this one after you've 
started using Keynote because now I don't really, I can't stand to use PowerPoint <coughs> so I'm not going back in time. Um, but there is the app, the PowerPoint app is available for your iPad. And if, you're, if you are a PowerPoint diehard, you still have the option. You can, just like on your computer, you can insert tables, you can insert photos, uh, shapes, you can add animations and so forth when you're creating a presentation just like you're used to on PowerPoint. And again, if you save it into one of your cloud, then you can access it from your computer wherever you're at. And you can share it with others. And if you ever want to share one, you see this little, looks like a little person with a plus. This is where you can share that. You can even invite people to share that file and they can be collaborators so that if Eva and I were working on a, on a presentation, I can add her onto it and she would see as I'm making changes and I can see as she's making changes, even though we're miles and miles apart, we can still do that project together. And you can do that in Keynote as well. You can draw, you can add all those things that you would do on the computer. You have that now in the, in the app on your iPad. Anybody use the app on their iPad, the PowerPoint? What do you use? Keynote? Keynote. Yeah. Okay. And then PowerPoint, too, you can add transitions, animation, just like, again, like you would on your computer. I won't go through all of that. And then you can share it, you can email it out, and convert it. And has anybody ever used Google Slides? Just like um, Google Docs. That's a, one of the part of the many suites that Google offers. Now you can create a presentation right on your computer. Just log on to your Gmail account, and now you can create a presentation on Google Slides. Are there advantages of using that? Does it offer something? No, it's it's actually to me it's kind of back in time. You, anybody who used Google Slides, it's going back in time, like five years ago mm -hmm. that I would have been using on PowerPoint. But for those people that don't have the Microsoft Suites or doesn't have the Keynote, this is an option for them to use where they can create on their device. <coughs> Are you comfortable <laughs> using Google Apps? Um, I do quite a bit, I mean, are you especially their forms. I mean, what they do with all your information, no? I don't know how they'd be different than anybody else that I do business with. I, don't. I think Apple's pretty good about not, not using this stuff. I mean, they, they make their money off it. I'm careful what I put out there, let's put okay. it that way. Uh, again, you can share it, you can send a copy, you can also convert that and save it as a PowerPoint. But again, that's three options I'm giving you just on doing a presentation. Here's an example. Google uh, does give you some sample templates, some slides that you can create from. But you see, it's kind of plain in it compared to some of the others. But it, you do have an option to use. And then for anybody ever used SlideShark? Charles, have you ever used SlideShark? This is if you are wanting to uh, broadcast a presentation, like maybe if you're doing a webinar type thing, with, with uh, SlideShark, you can have people who connect with it and they can actually uh, hear and see you moving the slides as that <coughs> webinar goes, goes forward. Uh, you can annotate slides, you can broadcast them over the, uh, the web to remote users. You can also, if you've got slides that are in a PDF format, you can just plop them right into there and that'll be part of that presentation. Now, one of the reasons I don't use it, it's $95 a year. But if I was um, uh, a professional speaker that goes out around the world and I'm doing webinars and, and seminars and people want to log in that it would probably be worth my time but not what I'm doing. Again, I'm giving you options. Anybody ever use Prezi? How do you use it? Yeah. 
Can you add just play this a little bit to help people create presentations that they will they heard about it, thought it looked cool, wanted to help them figure out how you do Basically, everything is online. And that's how you do it. There's no software that's sitting on your device. It's all done online. And you can just kind of create, uh, do your storytelling on it. Again, I have it. I think you can even do animation. And there's a lot of prepackaged stuff that goes on. In it. <coughs> but uh, it's an option. And is it free online? It is. It was less than I used Okay. Got some options. Any other questions about doing a presentation? <coughs> Don't forget the, the exam. Now, have you ever had a need that you're doing an event and you would like to broadcast that out to allow other people to participate and see it? Just kind of like how we're doing today, we're, we're streaming this presentation out um, to folks all over Virginia, East Tennessee, or, or wherever. You've got some options, and if you haven't thought about that, you can even use your device, your iPad, to stream um, your event, either through livestream.com, through Facebook. You've got various options. If you haven't thought about that, uh, I encourage you to, but when you're ready to do your presentation, it's kind of like here, you've got a couple options. You can either have, um, if you have Apple TV, you can do your presentation on that, show it. Or you can do like I'm doing today. I have a accessory that allow me to connect this um, projector into my iPad. Or if you have a big screen TV that has an HDMI port, you can do your presentation on that right there. And I've done about all of them. And the HDMI, the other end of it, you get an adapter that goes mm -hmm. in? Yeah, there's another adapter. That, take this one off that goes right to it, then you have your HDMI cord, and you've got it. And this comes in handy, too, if you're having, let's say you're having a family get-together, and you're showing old family pictures, and you don't want, you know, it's kind of tough for 20 people to get around a little small iPad. If you've got Apple TV or an HDMI port on the back of your TV, just connect them onto it, and now you can have that slide those pictures showing on that on the big screen. Anybody ever develop videos on their device? I know you're doing pretty good on it. Anybody else? Do y'all ever do videos? Yeah. No, but we gotta learn. <laughs> <Pardon>? <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, there are some great apps that allow you to create some pretty impressive um, presentations. This was all done on, on my iPad. By the way, we're, next week is our last week for the, for the challenge. But you can do some pretty cool stuff just on that little iPad that you're playing games with. iMovie is probably one of the tops for the iPad. Anybody use iMovie? Uh, I like it because I can use both still photos and video and kind of consolidate those all uh, together to create my story on my video. And I can even add text to it. You got a question? <coughs> do they have music that you pick from, or do you pick your own music and or C? Either way, any of those. Okay. You can have your options if you've got something you want to upload and you've got it on your your iPad. You can even add your own music to it to the background. Is that movie on the iPad pretty much like on the Mac? I can't, I can't answer you. I'm not you know, a Mac user. <laughs> no, I'm sure it is. It's the same. I mean, Apple created it. You can also have sound effects playing in the background. But iMovie is, uh, here's an example. We had, uh, we hosted my mom's side of the family's first family reunion that they've had for about 10 years at our farm. We thought we'd have about 20 people. We had 83 people coming. But I could take actual pictures and video and consolidate it into to a movie, and I did that on my phone using iMovie. <laughs> okay, enough of that. You've got the idea. 
I want to see your movie part, though. Did you put the movie in there anywhere? I mean, the, the, the video? Yeah, that was just... Oh, I saw the picture. It was the picture. But that was actually... I also did video oh, of me moving oh, okay. yeah, to the back. Yeah, I guess you did. I'm but sorry. you can take a picture and just kind of be in it as well. Mm -hmm. You can. And you, you can tell it how you want it to, to go up and down, sideways. And so when you're doing, putting video in there, you can just... Can you stick it so you just put the parts you want pretty easily? Yes, you can cut it. I have problems with that. I ain't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna do that. And then you can also add the text to, yeah, I to love that. that. Now see, that's that's actually me in the back of my mom's yard going this way. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had coffee yet that morning. <laughs> that's why it's kind of still. Huh. We had family from San Antonio, Texas to Kentucky to Illinois, Missouri, <coughs> and then that's that wasn't canned music. I went on the internet and found some free music and just embedded it on there because if you go through the whole thing, there's about three or four different songs in play. The other thing you can do too, if you have family members that are Apple users, you can invite them to share that. You can create a, a folder in a, a app or in a photo photo uh, album and for photo share and then you can invite them to, to have access to it and then they can see them all and they can make comments on the pictures or the video that you put on there or you can move it up to, to YouTube and all the other channels that you do and it's pretty easy to create a movie and I movie you just decide what kind of movie you want to do that's my mom and her two sisters talking to a, a, a niece on iPad. That's the way they communicate is FaceTime. They don't call on the phone, they just do FaceTime calls to each other. But you can, when you're ready to do it, you can tell it that I want to drop in a, a video, which will go to your camera roll. You'll find the, you know, you find the video you want and drop it in there. You can also drop in the photos and you just kind of start creating your story as you go along. And you can add text. You can even have, change the way that it goes in. You know, if you want it to just float in or if you want to you know have a segue between photos and, and clips you can do all that right here on the on the video and then you can add music add your sound effects if you want in the back and then when you're ready there's a couple options you can do you can save it as a movie theater or you can save it at, to youtube uh, with the movie theater, if you have an Apple TV, then it's all you can watch it on your Apple TV pretty easily. Or you can upload it to your cloud services. Now, the way a lot of my yes. what exactly is an Apple TV? Is that it's a box that fits on the back of your TV that's okay. made by Apple, and it'll give you access. They have all these apps built into it. Okay. Like if you have a Netflix account, uh, you can watch your Netflix. If you have um, Hulu, I'm trying to think, all of them. Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra has one. I use it. <laughs> yeah, they have all kinds of apps that's built into it. And then once you set it up, you, just, you can go and watch it all on your big TV. How is it different than, like, stream? It's like streaming through Chromecast, or? Yes, it is. It's yeah. Apple's version. Okay. okay. Yeah. But you can also stream live from your phone or your pad, too. Yes, yes. Which I don't believe you can do with the others. Yeah. Anything you can put on the screen of your phone or your pad. As long as you're on the same you can use Apple TV and move it up to your TV set. Okay. I mean, that opens up all kinds of stuff. PBS, yeah, I mean, everybody's got it. Now, we do airdrop a lot. If I was to do it on my phone, I could airdrop that um, from, if, they, if, if Eva's got a, an Apple phone and you've got airdrop turned on, instead of me having to email her, Text it, I could just airdrop it and it automatically goes onto her device in a matter of seconds. And that's something that we do all the time, especially sharing photos. Instead of taking up all the time to have to send out that email and look up there, just find them up and, and airdrop How far it. does that work? 30 feet or what? Um, well, I guess it depends on how much interference you have and where you're at, but probably it wouldn't go to the, the uh, office or to Jennifer's desk. But it just depends on all the other interference. Some other ones, <coughs> apps that you can create video, Majesto, anybody ever tried that? It's another app, it's a, there's a free version, but it has limited stuff uh, of 
but you can do all kinds of crazy um, animations to it. Another one is Movie Spirit, where you can add video, music, text, all to it. You can even add slow motion to your video if you would like. Um, it's $7.99. Um, and a long time, did you say you use that? I use it. Okay, give us a plug on that one, how you Well, I use it to, uh, it's so easy to use. And I started using it with the free one, but uh, it allows me to upload my logo. And when we have a group out, I'll take pictures of them kayaking. And, uh, and I can put text on it too. And, and I usually make, I'll bring in their logo if I can find it. And it's always upbeat, fun music. Then after that group leaves, I'll email that and you know, they can, the link, they can start sharing it things. And they love it. And it's it's nothing that we charge. It's kind of an extra thing we do when the group comes out. They love it. And, Which uh, means they're sharing it with their friends. <laughs> they're giving and their free advertising. This That's is where you need to go. Logo, See, <laughs> that little bitty how long does it, it take takes to do? me less than five minutes and i have it out like if they come they're out the river by four i usually have it to at seven o'clock that night that is out there and they love it in fact um you know they'll they'll send me notes and i, I think it's got me more business for sure good and that uh, five minutes can go a long yeah, way yeah like i was looking at texas roadhouse yesterday i was showing a group <coughs> how some of the things that we do to try to differentiate ourselves that are that don't cost anything, but it looks like you've done a lot of work, and that the video was one of them. But I did it with, I did it with every group. Texas Roadhouse was one I had out yesterday. They loved it. They sent it to their corporate office, and I thought, I wish I'd take a little bit more time. Now, do you have a free version or the? Paper? I went ahead and got the, I don't have the real, the medium thing, because I, had, I can do my logo better with that. Yeah. I know they more. give you just enough to get you hooked in, uh -huh. and then you really want that other feature, and then you have to pay but for it. But I want to do this iMovie. I think that might be a little bit better, actually. I think you'll like it. It just, it's pretty easy to learn. Uh, but I like, I go to YouTube and find videos on how to use these apps. But Somebody's done it. I couldn't sleep one night and I was trying to think of some different ways to do things and I found the Animoto and I made a video, video and I emailed it to Mike and he was in the other room because obviously I couldn't sleep. You don't really need to talk. I know. <laughs> I know. Anyway, and I, I, I fell asleep. Well, about an hour after I fell asleep, Mike came in there and woke me up and says, I love that video you made. All this was like at 3 or 4 in the morning. He could have waited. There's also one called Stop Motion Studio. It's a special grade app uh, for editing. So, oh, here's one that I did for Anna Marco. Why that's in, why I did that video? Just a few months earlier, we never thought she'd be able to be out in the garden. She was having some major heart uh, issues. That's why. That's there. Here's what Stop Motion Studio, where you can do some crazy stuff. Here's an example. That's kind of cool. Some other cool video editing things that you can use. Uh, there's one called text video where if you need to add some text to a video you already have, you can do it with that one. Um, how many of y'all make a mistake of filming a video but you had your phone going this way instead of this way and you're wanting to play it on YouTube? Surely somebody has done that before. I didn't know this one called it. Yes. So now I need to make that video to where it will work in YouTube. Well, there's this app called Crop Video where I can actually crop that video and take off the top part, you know, because I did it horizontal, and save it and now it will play because it looked funky on YouTube. And it's called Crop Video. Hmm. There's even an app that will let you put videos inside videos. So you can basically have two videos going to, together for a segment. You never know, you might need that. And then don't forget about streaming. That's an option you can you can use. I know for us in the new knowledge program that Facebook live streaming has really been very beneficial to us and helping us reach more people and provide these educational um, professional development programs and if you've got a Facebook page business page all you have to do is bring it up um, and you want to create an event you know like you're going to post something and then you should see there something that says live video and now using your 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 phone or your iPad now you can start streaming that it could be an interview with a happy client 
or you all could be interviewing each other about a new shipment or some new products, put it out there, and then people will start finding that. They're going to start seeing it, and when you when you finish that video, it's still going to be sitting up on your on your wall, and you've got it there. You can also download that and create you even more content that you can have and you can archive. And you know what it costs you to do this? Zero. Yes. I could be live streaming this class. I'm it is being live streamed <laughs> right now. Oh, it is. Right here. This little. Oh, it's doing it right now. Yes. It's been it's been streamed live to our uh, Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And then after this, then we can download it. What, what camera is that? It's called a Mevo, M-E-V-O. Um, can you put it up on the screen and show it to us? Come on, come on. <coughs> there we are. Wow. There we are. Now it's a little delay, but now there's our live. <laughs> cool. And you see there, people can comment, and you can also respond to those. If they want to ask a question while you're streaming that, they can, they can ask, and then a lot of times they'll be asking, I won't turn that off, uh, and then I can relay that to the presenter. Yes. Where are the things popping? If they like it or they love it, there's just little things they can just it just goes up on the screen. And those were all people like. Mm -hmm. so they yes. Facebook harassment. Yeah. <laughs> I can have to hit the button to get to the or you're watching. So that's constant. Those are all the people if, right now. That if they are, if they're, if they're taking the time with your finger hitting it, then it's showing it there. But and for you as a business, to me, that would be a great way to garner more um, input. You could be a certain day of the week that now you're going to talk about a new product or have you tried this um, this oil with with this, you know, food or with this fish or, I mean, whatever it is. And you can get people, you can even do um, a cooking segment. And again, you can even get a tripod that your iPad can sit in because we used to do that. And now you've got it up, you're hands free. You can either use the speaker or you can have a lapel mic, and you've got it right there. And this goes out on the feed too, so that yes, other people can pick it up. It's live. Right. And you can even, too, like uh, a lot of times when we're doing a session, I will share it on my wall and I'll share it on other business pages that I manage. Mm -hmm. In the same way with the other team mem members, Nita and Jennifer and, and Kathy, and that just expands it. And so somebody else that might not be a friend or, or like the small business incubator they might see it on the washington county business challenge and now they can just go and, and see it but and is that, they are also recording that at facebook correct facebook is that and way that'll give me an option of downloading it uh, yeah but uh, also can't people go on two hours from now and watch it yes that's what i'm saying it's yeah. archived on there yeah but if for our case we want we archive those into youtube so we have to get that video off of Facebook, download it, and then we'll we'll edit it, put an opening page and a closing page, and then we'll upload it to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash new knowledge. And we've got probably seven. Slash what? New knowledge. New knowledge, okay. And you'll find probably 70 plus workshops that we've done on there. Casey's probably right up there, because she's done a couple for us. And that anybody, what that gives is people on demand options to do get professional de development training. And we're the only ones in Virginia doing this. <laughs> what what uh, Bluetooth uh, mic do you like best? Oh, there's all kinds of options. Uh, I, I don't have a preference. That's got a built in mic. And it depends on the environment, too. If you're at a side of the street, you'll probably want lapel mics. But if you're in your shop and it's kind of quiet, then you could probably work just fine with, with your mic that's built now. I'm yeah. not, I'm using the mic that's on the camera. Like the one on your pad.
video will stay on their server for 30 days. Any, any time during that 30 days, you have the option of downloading that video. Uh, but you can start having followers on it. Um, you can invite people to follow it. You can also promote it on your on your Facebook. This is what we started out with was live stream before we went to before Facebook came around. <coughs> Just giving you options. Do you have any preference between live stream and use stream? Uh, live stream. Um, equipment needed. You got your iPad, your phone. Um, you can use a smartphone, um, Droid, or GoPro camera, or the Vivo camera is what I'm using, or what Jennifer's using today. Here's an example of when we're doing them both. We used to do them both on Facebook Live and live stream. We would do it on the on the, tele, the smartphone on the other one. So you got two streaming audiences. What? What price range is that camera? About five ninety nine. About five ninety nine. Five hundred ninety nine. Mm -hmm. What's the, again? There's variations. You can have lapel mics. You can um, have a tripod. You can even, if you want to use your cell phone to do it, and you need to clip it on something, you've got these um, uh, contraptions that you can use, or you can wrap it around something. These kind of so you've got options that you can use for that. And again, okay. it's free. Pardon? Yeah, as long as it's not wet when you put it on there. Um, but that's another example of getting it out. I could see all kinds of ways you all could really use that. I think that could bring <coughs> some a whole other audience that you never thought of. I like to think my, my, my mind's going. <laughs> my mind's going for you right now. Uh, photo editing. Many of you all mentioned that as something that you wanted to, to use. There's some various apps that you can use for that. Um, one that I loved for years, I had been wanting an app that allowed me to cut out parts of a picture. So sometimes it was my middle sister, Patty, that I could take her out of the photos. Uh, but uh, I couldn't find anything. And finally, I came across this app called Knockout. And it will allow me to, for example, <laughs> this is my little buddy at church, Brady Bailey. And he is all about everything basketball. His dad's a coach, so you can see what he's doing. I wanted to take him out of that picture, um, so I was able to remove all the, take out all the background on it, and then I went to the internet and found a picture of a basketball team. North Carolina, and sent that to him. It tickled him to death being able to do that. So I took this, took out, erased all the background, and now I have a picture. That is amazing. And now you can just plop that right into. Like that one too. Mm. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, so you're talking about live streaming, which is all one way, but have you actually also done two-way stuff online so that, you know, I mean, I'm thinking Google Hangout, I'm thinking, I have it in a workshop environment. I have yeah. just in doing meetings. I've done Google Hangout. If you're not familiar with Google Hangout, it's another free app, a part of Google, and you can have up to nine people on a Google Hangout with you. So Zoom is is maybe another good possibility. Uh, I haven't used Zoom. Okay, because I've been on webinars where there's some feedback, two-way stuff, and I'm interested in that. Oh, by the way, you can afford Knockout. Free. I love that. It's my favorite four-letter word tip if you pull out in front of me on Thursday. <laughs> and then there's those times where you have two pictures and you need to put those into one. Uh, there's an app called Superimpose that will allow you to do that. Uh, here's some various pictures I put into one. You can also add text to it where I took a picture, put our logo on it, and add the text, and now I've totally transformed that, those two photos into one. Um, here's an example of how I used Knockout. My mother, when we were preparing for the deal reunion, we did not have any pictures of my uncle, aunt, and their children together in any picture. We, all, we had all these other ones. So what I did using Knockout is I started taking out parts of them. I took out my uncle. Then I took out, um, and I started seeing how I added him. I, I basically took this picture, took my aunt, these two together and that, and put that into one picture. 
and was able then even I, when I finished it, I sent it to yeah. Walgreens and had copies made for my <coughs> aunts, aunts and uncles. So you've already created a new a new photo. Now you can just save it up to, to Walgreens and send it and have them print it for you. Are you thinking? That is not yeah. Fun. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, another one too that you can mark up photos, a sketch. That's a free one, and it's kind of if you, anybody ever used Evernote, it's part of the Evernote package, but uh, it's free. You can use Sketch. Or like for example, uh, you're having a picnic or something, and you need to take a map and you need to add the directions to it. You can use Sketch to do all that. Put the circle in, put the arrow, put the text in there, and now you can save it as a photo, and now you can add that to your motion in your flyer or what have you. Now, Charles, all this is being done on the iPad. I just want you to know, okay? <laughs>